Hello learners, today we will discuss about writing skills. After getting this topic, you will be able to understand what writing means and what is the nature of its relationship with listening, speaking and reading. You will be able to see all these skills in a holistic perspective. You will understand what we mean by good writing. You will learn about the teacher's role in teaching children writing. You will learn about various forms of writing. Now we will discuss what is communication. The process of communication is what allows us to interact with other people. Without it, we would be unable to share knowledge or experience with anything outside of ourselves. Common forms of communication include speaking, writing, gestures, touch and broadcasting. Language is a tool for communication. We communicate with others to express our ideas and to know others' ideas as well. Communication takes place where there is speech. Without speech, we cannot communicate with one another, but writing skill has enormous importance for the learners of any language to keep the records updated. The use of language is an activity which takes place within the confines of our community. We use language in a variety of situations. People at their workplace, such as researchers working either in a medical laboratory or in a language laboratory, are supposed to speak correctly and effectively in order to communicate well with one another. Any gap in communication results in misunderstandings and problems. As Jesperson told, language is a set of human habits, the purpose of which is to give expression to thoughts and feelings. Learning of language is a skill subject. Every skill requires a lot of practice. In teaching learning of English, the main four skills are listening, speaking, reading, and writing. Now we will talk about listening. It is important as it improves speaking and pronunciation. It develops interpersonal skills. Receptive skill that needs active participation. Now we will discuss about speaking. Speaking is the most obvious skill. It is most interactive skill. It develops understanding through communication, develops interpersonal skills such as team working, it is used in assessment as well. Then comes reading. Reading basically informs writing and writing style. It develops knowledge of language structure. It develops vocabulary. It registers and purpose. Now, we have learnt about three language skills, listening, speaking and reading and their mutual dependence. The ability to write is the last one to develop in children and is also dependent on these three skills while learning to write. The two functions of language, communication and expression are very important. Now we will discuss what is writing. According to what is given in dictionaries, writing refers to the act of making symbols and marks on a surface which can be understood by another person. Although this definition is straightforward. It ignores the hints involved in our everyday use of the term. For example, this definition makes no reference to the important link between language and writing and say a person drawing a picture. The picture is also made on a surface and may often be understood by many other persons but we can't call it writing. It is not very clear when human language actually developed. Perhaps the organs we need to speak evolved more than 1.5 million years ago. It is a dark area and there are many hypotheses about it. Yet it is estimated that spoken language arose around 1 million or 10 lakh years ago, while written language came into being around 5000 years ago. Broadly, written language came into existence as communities became increasingly larger over a period of time. The interactions among the members of the community and those with members of other communities multiplied.
and it became necessary to keep record of various transactions particularly those involving land, revenue and trade etc. Julius Renard says writing is the best way to talk without being interrupted means whenever you write there is no one to make any kind of interruption. Cervantes says the pen is the tongue of mind undoubtedly whatever comes in our mind that we pen down. Now what is writing? Writing can be said to the act of forming the symbols making marks on flat surface of some kind. Writing is a process where symbols have to be arranged according to a certain conventions to form words and words have to be arranged to form sentence. Writing involves encoding of a message of some kind that is we translate our thoughts into language. This definition is given by Byron in 1988. Now according to Noonan in 2003 Writing are physical and mental act. It's about discovering ideas, thinking about how to communicate, develop them into statements and paragraphs that will be comprehensible to a reader. Writing has basically dual purposes to express and impress. Writers must select the most advantageous medium of their writing. Each type has a different level of difficulty which determined by its objective. Then writing is a process and also a product. The writer creates, plans, writes, various drafts, revises, and dicts, and publishes. The audience reads is as a product. In the words of Beckham, reading makes a full man Conference a ready man and writing an exact man. What he means is that writing is a useful means of organizing thought and giving it a precision. Writing is a medium as it is used to express what has been spoken. It does not represent a new language but simply a way of representing the same language. Now we will discuss about importance of writing. Written communication is an essential element of expression. The ability to articulate oneself through the written word provides one with the opportunity to share their knowledge in a meaningful, effective way. Now, what is the importance of writing from educational perspective? Developing written skills will enable students to learn how to compose ideas organize their thoughts and arguments, support key points and share information. Acquiring these skills will also prepare students for their future academic and professional endeavors. Learning to write is a key aspect of everyday life. Writing facilitates reflection, expression and enables individuals to compose their thoughts. Therefore, providing us with the framework for one of the most prominent methods of daily communication. In an electronic world, where verbal communication has become less frequently used, learning to write in a cohesive, structured manner allows individuals to convey their thoughts effectively. Writing provides us with catharsis and a sense of accomplishment. Completing and feeling good about a piece of writing that a student has worked on promotes confidence and this is an essential element to personal productivity in all factors of education. Next is when a student sees a piece of work that they have successfully completed this leads to positive emotions. We work best when we are happy and feel positive about our achievements. This leads us to continue on a path of success. The ability to compose critical thought through written articulation allows those who best process information in a visual manner to conceptualize information. There are many different types of learners in our world, for example, tactile, auditory and visual, the latter of which requires students and individual to succeed when processing information visually. Therefore, it is essential 
to accommodate the many learners in the classroom and the learning to write not only accommodates visual learners but also allows students who struggle in this area to develop their ability to conceive information in a visual manner. Now, what is the difference between spoken and written language? Let's discuss about that. Firstly, the written word is more permanent than the spoken message. How? The spoken word lasts only as long as the sound of our speech lasts. Written material usually lasts as long as the material on which it is written lasts. Thus, the spoken words are intangible, invisible and temporary, while the written words are tangible, visible and permanent. Secondly, while speaking, the learner is often in front of us. The content of our message consists of words as well as the gestures we use while speaking, including the total quality of our voices, technically called paralinguistic features. The context in which the conversation is taking place is also clear to both the listener and the speaker. So spoken sentences may look very different from their written counterparts in writing. Thirdly, while speaking, we also can correct ourselves right then and there we can avoid a misunderstanding. But no such facility exists for written language. As in the words of famous writer Prem Chand, the tongue does not get chopped on speaking, but the hands do get chopped on writing. Luckily, while writing, we also have more time at our disposal than we do while speaking. Thus, we have the chance of improving our sentences and rewriting them if we wish. Therefore, writing is relatively more complex and demanding than speech. Fourthly, while spoken language is constantly changing, written language changes very slowly since there are many social pressures to sustain its form. In the beginning, all efforts of the child at writing are informed by the way words are spoken. If these spoken sounds do not correspond to the accepted forms of writing, it increases the probability of child. Now, we will discuss about the different aspects of writing skills. First one is syntax. Syntax means the arrangement of words and phrases to create well-formed sentences in a language. Second one is content. It means relevance, clarity, originality, and logic in what has been written. Then comes grammar. Grammar means rules for verbs, agreement, articles, adjective, etc. Then the writing process which means getting ideas, getting started, writing drafts, revising, etc. Then mechanics. It includes handwriting, spellings, punctuation, etc. Audience means the readers. Organization, the process of making plans and arranging for something. Then comes word choice, which refers to a writer's selection of words as determined by a number of factors including meaning, specificity, level of diction, tone and audience. Purpose means the reason for writing. Now, we will see the writing process. In it, firstly, the writer pre-writes, then he drafts, after drafting, the writer revises. After revises, which kind of changes are needed? According to that, the writer makes amendments and edit the written material. After editing, proofreading, the writer gives it for publication. This is the process of writing. Now, there are different writing process. First one is pre-write means plan your writing, then write, write your first draft, revise, change your writing to make it better, edit means check your writing and then publish, share your writing for audience. Now what is the writing process? Writing is a process that involves at least four distinct steps, pre-writing, 
drafting, revising and editing. It is known as a recursive process. While you are revising, you might have to return to the pre-writing step to develop and expand your ideas. Pre-writing. Pre-writing is anything you do before you write a draft of your document. It includes thinking, taking notes, talking to others, brainstorming, outlining and gathering information like interviewing people, researching in the library or assessing data. Although pre-writing is the first activity you can engage in, generating ideas is an activity that occurs throughout the writing process. Then drafting. Drafting occurs when you put your ideas into sentences and paragraphs. Here you concentrate upon explaining and supporting your ideas fully. Here you also begin to connect your ideas. Regardless of how much thinking and planning you do, the process of putting your ideas in words changes them. Often the very words you select evoke additional ideas or implications. Don't pay attention to such things as spellings at this stage. This draft tends to be writer-centered. It is you telling yourself what you know and think about the topic. Then comes revising. Revision is the key to effective documents. Here you think more deeply about your reader's needs and expectations. The document becomes reader-centered how much support will each idea need to convince your readers? Which terms should be defined for these particular readers? Is your organization effective? Do readers need to know X before they can understand Y? At this stage, you also refine your prose, making each sentence as concise and accurate and possible. Make connections between ideas explicit and clear. Then comes editing. Under editing, the writer checks for such things such as grammar, mechanics and spellings. The last thing you should do before printing your document is to spell check it. Don't edit your writing until the other steps in the writing process are complete. Now we will discuss about stages of teaching writing. Writing can be of different types, controlled writing, guided writing and free writing, controlled writing. To teach the mechanics of writing accuracy and readiness for further writing activities, it is controlled completely by teacher. For example, handwriting, copying, dictation and spelling. Then next is guided writing. Guided writing means to provide graded guidance in vocabulary and structures to help the students to avoid mistakes such as a model with direction for rewriting topics provided by the teacher. Then comes free writing. Free writing means offering the students to write original content using their own language. For example, descriptive or narrative writing. Now, what is good writing? Good writing includes completeness, correctness, credibility, clarity, conciseness, consideration, vitality. Now what is completeness? Completeness means when all information which is needed is provided. Correctness means relevant and precise information. Your writing gives relevant and precise information. Credibility, the written material supports your argument. Clarity means it should not be vague, confusing or ambiguous. Conciseness, it means the written material should be to the point. Consideration, it anticipates the reader's reaction, how the reader will feel after going through the written material. Vitality, here the writer should try to use the active voice rather than the passive voice. Now, we will discuss about principles of effective writing. For this, let's have a look. Firstly, put the reader first, then plan, organize and write. Use simple words and short sentences. 
Use jargon only when necessary. Write with verbs and nouns. Format to improve readability. Now we will discuss about how the writer can be put first. Communication means understanding. Then write yourself to express not impress. Use words readers can picture. Tie into the readers experience. WIIFM means what's in it for me. Then plan, organize and write. It means before you begin. You have to think, you have to consider who is the audience, what is the purpose of the message and how will the reader use the information. As you begin, assemble all useful information, determine what's important, choose what to leave out and group information logically. There are four ways to organize that is division, compare or contrast, cause or effect then problem analysis solution. Now let's discuss about division. Start with main idea then discuss the parts. For example, there is problem in handwriting of Hindi in sixth class. Then finding out the reason how the problem can be solved. Discussion for making strategies can be seen under the division process. Compare or contrast in it, use familiar to explain familiar, going from easy to difficult, from known to unknown. Then put the conclusion up front. Problem analysis solution, find a straightforward way to offer recommendations. Then next point is use simple words and short sentences and avoid wordy prepositional phrases. The example can be seen here. In the amount of for, in order to, instead of in order to, to, instead of due to the fact that we can use the word because, instead of in the event that we can use the word if, like during the time that we can use when or while. Next point is use jargon only when necessary. Now what is jargon? Jargon is a type of language that is used in a particular context and may not be well understood outside the context. The context is usually a particular occupation means that is a certain trade, profession or academic field but any in-group can have jargons. Write with verbs and nouns. Like a smart writer use the active voice when it is okay only then use passive voice. For example, the company sells insurance. It should not be like this. Insurance is sold by the company. Format document to improve readability. For this, use lists, bullets, charts, tables, indents, italics, bolds, headings and subheadings. Means the 100 word rule. In his book, Style, Kessel, Lucas offered the following basic principles to shorten that painful process of learning how to write better. Let's have a look. First one is brevity. It is bad manners to waste the reader's time. Therefore, brevity first, then clarity. Second is clarity. It is bad manners to give readers needless trouble. Therefore, clarity. And how is clarity to be achieved? mainly by taking trouble and by writing to serve people rather than to impress them. Then communication. The social purpose of language is communication. To inform, misinform or otherwise influence others. In some modern literature, there has appeared a tendency to replace communication by a private mundering to oneself which shall inspire one's audience to munder privately to themselves, rather as if the another handed round a box of drugged cigarettes. Then next is emphasis. Just as the art of war largely consists of deploying the strongest forces at the most important points, so the art of writing depends a good deal on putting the strongest words in the most important places. One of the most important things in English style is word order. 
for us the most emphatic place in a clause or sentence is the end then honesty if handwriting reveals character writing reveals it still more most style is not honest enough easy to say but hard to practice a writer may take to long words or a writer may cultivate the obscure to seem profound or he may cultivate extrinsicity to seem original but really original people do not have to think about being original so honesty is essential in writing then comes passion and control this indeed is one of the eternal paradoxes of both life and literature that without passion little gets done yet without control of that passion its effect are largely ill or null then next point is reading one learns to write by reading good books as one learns to talk by hearing good talkers revision every author's fairy godmother should provide him not only with the pen but also with a blue pencil means every writer should do revision sophistication and simplicity sophisticated do not necessarily express themselves better than the simple in fact many often have much to learn from them then comes sound and rhythm apart from a few simple principles the sound and rhythm of english prose seem to me matters where both writers and readers should trust not so much to rules as to their ears now how we should begin to start let's have a look first one we will discuss about fine motor skills before a child can learn to write it is necessary for him or her to develop fine motor skills means the ability to grasp in order to encourage the development of these skills children should be allowed to manipulate solid objects as they see fit holding turning twisting and playing with objects develops grasping ability in children in this way we can develop fine motor skills another very important activity that provides children with enjoyment in addition to developing motor skills essential for writing is drawing therefore children should be encouraged to draw children's early drawings often resemble meaningless scribbles which later evolve into discernible shapes and figures some other activities that help develop the motor skills necessary for writing include games such as pouring water into a container stringing beads and flowers making objects out of clay or dough etc in this way we can develop the process of writing among students by developing their fine motor skills now i would like to summarize what we have studied about today we started with what is the meaning of writing to go through the process of writing a writer pre writes then drafts then revise then edits and then publish it for the sake of audience there are different stages of teaching writing like control writing in which the teacher has control over the writing then guided writing in which teacher guides the students to write and free writing in which the student is allowed to write in original thinking on his own then we discussed about different principles in which we discussed that we have to put the reader first then we will plan organize and write one should use simple words and short sentences one should use jargons only when necessary one should write with verbs and nouns and then format to improve readability hope this session will be helpful to you in the last i would like to add if people cannot write well they cannot think well thank you